Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I take this opportunity to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And at the same time, I would like to welcome you to this somber event, yes. Indeed, it is a sad day for South Africa. It is a sad day for Africa. It is a sad day for the entire world. As we bid farewell to the great icon of song and his beloved wife, Mom Rose, who has been an extreme pillar of support throughout their life. I shall be failing if I don't take this opportunity and express a word of gratitude to the family for having bestowed such an honor on me to direct proceedings on this very, very, very sad day. The fraternity of song has been dealt a big blow. The world of the arts has been equally dealt a blow, as well as the academic world, much so to the church, the Salvation Army that he so loved and dedicated his whole life to. It is indeed a, great, a, a very sad day, ladies and gentlemen, The demise of Prof. Kumalo, in particular, has broken many hearts the world over. But then it is at this point that I would like to share with you the words from Maya Angelou, which I find fitting very well on this sad occasion. And I quote, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Indeed, it is so with Msiligazi. We shall also remember how he made us feel. And I can take this further to say, whilst Maya Angelo has said people will forget what you said and people will forget what you did, but the manner in which they made you feel will take you back to remember what they said because the feeling has that strong influence Feeling has got that strong impact 
that might trigger the memory to remember what Manjali said, you shall have forgotten what he said and what he did. Whilst I'm saying that, I will never forget how Mdunga, being supported by this wonderful girl, Wakamasala, made me in particular feel made me, the Brakpan boy, fear. And then I will just take two highlights out of his great legacy, out of his rich legacy. Mtuma has seen it all, he saw it all, from the rural KZN up to the times he spent in the urban area, right from Pretoria, Mamelodi, traversing all the way to the East End, where he made such an impact in the town of Brapan. I'm reminded of two songs in particular which define this man. Yes, modesty defined his character because much as he was such a magnanimous character, but modesty defined his character. It is for that reason that in all instances, he would always say, He never wanted to extend himself above anybody, above anybody else. But if he could not be regarded as who he is, he contained himself and he would say, Ka, That's the type of person we have alongside him, Marose, who we call the Prakpan, circumference. <laughs> Somebody's going to say something about that. Yes, she was called circumference in Prakpat. In fact, if you say Marose in Prakpat, they wouldn't know who you're talking about. Now, the two highlights I want to make before I proceed with the program. I said, he portrayed a gentlemanly character. He portrayed, he projected an image of a perfect, which he was, of course. But deep beneath him, there was a simmering activism about the injustices perpetrated on the poor people of South Africa, that is the blacks. There was that simmering activism which he projected in his music. Two songs come to the fore. Mang Fitwa Wolf and Go Zegbeni. And Mdunga had this way of disguising his feelings under the cloak of religion or under the cloak of some social you know, event. But deep in the music, there was a very simmer, a content simmering with anger. It will deceive you that it's a song that talks about Somebody passing away. Why? Because there is peace. And that peace is the peace I need away from the injustices of the system. There's no white man. Not you, Richard. He loved you. A pass. There's no don't pass. That's why that song, when he, when he wrote it, he kept on jumping very, very, you know, strongly from one section to another. Away from the madness of the injustice. Because they've got that African freedom. When he wrote, 
I know that the title of the song is Gozeg Benin. And then beneath the title, in brackets, he wrote, Is Kalu Sabantuana Bagua Israel keep it? That was a disguise. Of course, Kalu Sama Israel Nick's lap is Kalu say to this. Might go Benin. And when I, when I asked him about that, he said to me, you see, we live in a very cruel world because before any choir sings the 10th bar of my song, I'll be languishing in a dark corner in some police cell. So, I will never forget. I will never forget when I sang that song under his friend, his greatest friend, Uabia Masas. Ironically, yo, it was Yense. Ironically, when we sang in Swaziland in 1984 in the David Art singing Gozik Benin, conducted by his friend, Uabia Masas, South Africa was on fire. And Swaziland was peaceful. I hope you understand why I'm saying ironically. That year, South Africa was on fire, and Swaziland was peaceful. And the audience at St. Michael's High School was a mixed audience. And before we sang Wozegbenin, he just made a small Nyana speech, which brought tears to my eyes. He said, South Africa is on fire. And when we look at the audience here, South Africa is failing to have such an audience. He spoke painfully, and then when we sang the song, I was singing a tenor solo. in my life. Never cried so much. Because of the poignancy in the, in the music, the poignancy that he spoke about to me when he said, when he said, when I wrote the song Lala Muktula, I was in the place of my friend, Bishop Mohova, who was hunted by the police. And I had to take his place when he, his, his daughter passed away. And the poignant I felt, I'll never feel it again. When the mother poured soil into the grave of the daughter of Mr. Bhuba, whom I represented, I became a godfather. And white mighty, Rubala Hansen Lady I've never felt such poignancy in my life. Rest peaceful in Dungwa. Gusaza Ukulunyanga. Rest peacefully. Maro's circumference. Close thine eyes. Close thine eyes and sleep secure. Thy soul is safe. Thy body sure. I will take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, and call Brahot Sticks Mabuse to give us a musical item. Things have changed, but if things have changed, it's still fine for me to to rather render a song that I would have really been comfortable speak and make music. Okay, I've been guided. Uh, program director, <clears throat> we 
yazi gani itina abatuli. We we miss some of the things that are necessary to go on when we have to speak. Um, it has become fashionable to use iPads. And sometimes these iPads get lost. <laughs> and then we have to scramble and scribble things around. I, sadly, I was not immune to, to that experience. I had my iPad, well, thankfully I didn't lose my iPad. But for some strange reason, what I had written just disappeared. So the iPad wasn't lost, but the, the speech I had put on the iPad disappeared and I had to start scrambling to try and write a few things so that I at least do my part as expected. Uh, if I fumble, you know, along the way, it's not because of lack of trying, but because um, I had to wake up in the morning and start writing things. And I sometimes don't read my handwriting very well because I scribble things. Uh, I don't know whether I should speak more about Samro or speak uh, about my experience and my interaction with Prof. But because I was, uh, let me start and say, as it is the norm, program director, Umdeni Wagwakumal, Giving a lele in our fundis of our corner, la Bonke Abashon Pegile, getting a slum, all protocol is observed, right? Is that correct, Eliza? Good. Uh, I am privileged to have known and to have served with, perhaps to even say, under Professor Mzeligazi Kumalo at Sanro. And to have imbibed so much, not only about music and service, but humility and courtesy. Prof. Sister Unoma Venda, I've always wondered why not Unoma Zulu. You know, I also had known U Noma Venda for many years. So every time I'd be teasing her and says, Oh, I'm joy, Luen. She wrote eloquently about her brother. I quote, Often when a public figure dies, the media concentrates on his public persona and ignores the life he led as an ordinary person." Unquote. It may well be so, but was Prof ordinary? Maybe, maybe not. If all the tributes and the messages at the memorial service are testimonials to his legacy, then Prof was not just ordinary, he was larger than life. When I heard the news of his passing, my immediate reaction was the usual feeling of sadness and a sense of loss. I immediately called Deliza and Dr. Kumar, not to be confused with the soccer star, by the way, she, a, a, a real doctor this time. <laughs> to express my condolences, hardly a day after having spoken to both, I read in social media about the passing of Meros. Maybe I should... I 
I received a call from Deliza. Umde Niwago Kumalo has requested you to speak at the service of Prof, also representing Samaro. For his Prof was an integral part of transformation and probity at Samaro. Given the many times I had to speak, I guess I have now mastered the courage and rather adept at navigating my way around what I may have to say about my departed colleagues. But then, how does one begin to speak about such a, an illustrious, distinguished man of such stature? Recognized by none else but the late first president of the South African former president, uh, Nelson Mandela, and former President Tabombeki, and the international community at large. All right, considering much of what I could say may have been said by many at the memorial service, I should perhaps share an anecdote Prof told, uh, yeah, you see now, this uh, iPad story comes to play. Um, Prof used to tell us, you know, what I've always liked about Prof, he was not only educated academically, but he was also streetwise. And you know, Bobra Sbanban used to call him Ubra Jimi. And when you walked into the offices of Samro, you'd say, yeah, I guess Ubra Jimi Ek. I said, oh, I didn't know that, Prof. Jimi. He said, I guess Obra Jimi Melaiti. Oh, and then I realized that no, he had street cred. One of the stories that he told us is that uh, at some stage, Yaz Moselokshini people, you know these youngsters, Johnny come lately. They always take chances with people because ah, they, they saw this Madala and said, I we're well, going to relieve him of his Mercedes Benz. Prof said, when they came closer, I realized that, you know, these are small fries and they probably believe in superstition, you know? And believing in superstition, I will evoke something that might probably, they might probably believe it's spirits. And he called his lovely wife Meros by his name. He says, I started screaming, Ditari! 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 And the youngsters started running away because they probably thought, you know, Otsuri, you know, well, you probably all know what happened. He still drove his vehicle, by the way, after that experience. Um, I just want to say a few words from Samra, perhaps, just to allow... Um, Uh, Prof was a long-standing member of Samro and was a core committee member of the Samro Endowment for the National Arts. In this role, he was responsible for editing and production of three essay song books of South Africa, Sings books, sorry, uh, books of South African choral music notated in, so in tonic sulfur and Western staff notation to promote and preserve our choral heritage. And this was by Nicholas Maweni, who's the current chairman, chairperson. Professor Kumalo is remembered as a Pan-Africanist and passion for his music and his choirs. Many students benefited through Samro, Mzilikazi Kumalo Bessery for indigenous African music. I think in the obituary, most of the information that is contained in um, Nicholas Maweni's uh, message would be, would be there. So I will just say, I will end up by saying, as we mourn his passing, we must continue to celebrate his life and his achievements. 
We offer our sincerest condolences to his family, many friends, and colleagues throughout our nation. We will continue to honor, preserve, and promote his work. We will, sorry, I beg your pardon. We will continue to honor, pres honor preserve, and promote Prophet Sam Zeligazi's legacy through the work of Samro Music Archive, concluded Maweni. Now, that was part of the program as speaking. Now, the second part is for me to do what I do most, that is making music. And for this, I'd love to invite a friend, a close colleague, and probably a family member who I had the privilege of working and playing with many a times, O Prince Limwasa, to join me on stage as we do a small piece for Prof. I know there are quite a number of colleagues here who, would have, who are envious of Prince, but sorry, guys, your turn will come. By the way, we have to take off our mask because we can't play the mask.
Without any waste of time, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call upon his friend, special friend, Umlunga Begatem Tanda Aku. Over to you, Richard Cook. I first met James Kumala, as I first knew him, in 1987 when my choir, the Chanticleer Singers, were asked to join with the Soweto Songsters for a concert at the Soweto Teacher Training College to raise funds for an overseas tour. This collaboration was at the instigation of a member of my choir who was on the staff at Witz University, along with Prof. Both choirs sang their own pieces at this concert. We never did any joint items, and looking back now, I realized that this was the start of a long and very fruitful partnership, which included a very deep friendship between Prof and myself. The next time I was asked to work with him was through a connection with Agri Claster at the beginning of 1989, when he, Agri Claster, encouraged me to contact Jimmy Kumalo, as he called him. This was in connection with a massed choir festival which Agri spearheaded through the Sowetan newspaper. Agri's staff thought he was mad to try to run a choir festival when the country was basically in flames. This inflammatory situation remained for the next five years and longer, but Agri was proved right again and again with the nation-building project, which established itself as a true beacon of hope in the years leading up to 1994 and the first democratic elections in South Africa. It was during those years, while Prof and I were traveling around the province, listening to and working with so many choirs, that our friendship grew. On our journeys, many of them on dark winter's nights, we shared stories of our families, our careers, and our thoughts about South Africa and the future. And I started hearing stories about Mzilikazi's Zulu heritage and the pride in his own culture. As the years went by, this pride in his culture led to his arranging many songs for the Mass Choir Festival, which included some of the first versions of sections of what was to become his epic, Ushaka Kasen Zanga Kohan. He also insisted that the first half of every nation-building concert should consist of traditional songs, just one sung by each choir, but sung well. And many of these songs were being lost through a decline in oral tradition and the passing on of songs and stories that make up a culture. Mzilikazi believed very strongly that they needed to be preserved for future generations. And this first half of the program was how he realized that dream. Then, in the second half of each program, he would often arrange popular folk songs into a medley, which culminated in the audience joining in with these well-known tunes. Both of these became highlights of the nation-building mass choir festival concerts. And part of his genius was tapping directly into this incredible cultural heritage. There were also many other aspects of nation building which ensured its popularity and success. He always insisted on high standards. Many was the time he said, it won't do, it just won't do. Usually with a very strong emphasis and in that very particular way that he had of saying things. He was absolutely adamant that the Mass Choir Festival was for classical African music, not pop music. He always said there were many outlets for pop music, but the Mass Choir Festival would not be one of them. I also loved his sense of humor, and he would often chuckle at his own jokes or comments made. I remember a few of those occasions which I'd like to relate to you. One was when I invited the various music directors from the Nation Building Committee to supper at my home, and I thought I would explain in my rather basic closer that I would cook a large leg of lamb. And I said, 
Nshambi, Zia Peke im Lenze Gagusha. And he chuckled, his famous chuckle, and he said, Richard, we must really fix your grammar. What you are saying is that we are going to eat the leg of someone called Gusha. What you really have to say is, Imlenze Wengusha. He was always a wonderful language teacher. He was also always amused by my dance movements, which I encouraged my symphony choir to do. The choir were not natural movers. And at one mass choir festival, the MC of the event, Mr. Sambo, commented on the lack of discipline in my choir, because when we turned, some of them turned the wrong way, and it was a mess. Prof often commented jokingly on these strange movements that you make. Truth be told, I often just made them up, and they were definitely Mlungu movements. When we started nation building in 1989, the committee was entirely white, except for Prof. By 2004, towards the end of his tenure, it was entirely black, except for me. And I clearly remember his saying at one of the meetings, when there was some question to answer which no one else could answer, he said, Come, ons vraag vir die klein baas. We were absolutely at ease with one another, and nothing we said to or about each other would give offense. On occasion, we would travel by plane somewhere, and I was always slightly surprised when he, as a Salvationist, asked for a small bottle of white wine. When I commented on this once, he didn't answer me directly, but he just said, but you know, Richard, it's dry wine so it doesn't have too much sugar. <laughs> Another occasion I remember was when we first did his arrangement of Bawo Tiklo Somandla. 500 male voices started it off. Bawo Tiklo Somandla. I want you to imagine it, sung by 500 strong male voices. They sang it and he turned to me and he said, Wow, Richard, did you hear that? I'm just shaking from the power. I've been privileged to be part of this family, and I well remember being invited to a great gathering of Kumalos in Cape Town at Kirstenbosch Garden, where it seemed the whole garden was taken up by members of the family. Mzilikazi Umtungwa was the patriarch, and he loved being surrounded by so many of his relatives and friends. I learned a lot from him about music, about life and language, about love, and about getting the best out of people. He could be quite exacting and demanded results from those around him, but it was because he believed that everyone could be the best at what they did. He made me a better person. I'll always be grateful for that and for the friendship that he and Rose showed to me. Although it's hard that both of them passed last week, it seems fitting that they should have gone together to the heavenly kingdom. And then, with the cherubim and the seraphim and the whole heavenly host, as they sing, holy, 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 he will turn to Rose and say, wow, Rose, darling, did you feel that power? Now that's what I call a massed choir. Thank you, Richard. At this time, as we call Dr. Ruel and Swane to come in front, it is important for, the, for this audience to be given just a small picture of what is about to happen. In most biographical accounts about the life of Professor Kumalo, I've always been disturbed by this big omission of the life of this family in Brakpan. Because if you don't talk about Brakpan, what is a Kumalo? There's a big gap. If you don't mention Brakpan, Ngobus, 
It's a big gap. If you don't talk about Black Pan, about um, uh, circumference and Professor Mzilgaz, Uprajim, who was called pra scratch in Black Pan, we as it is, what he worked to scratch. It's a school, after he had moved from Palmerstar, when he went to the East End, it's a school called Mamelung Mabini, which was very close to his heart. When he pronounced or when he mentioned the name Mamelung Mabini, Mamelung Mabini, he said it with such passion. That's where he made an impact with the choir. He got a little bit of a question. And that was to say, though there was, they had adverse conditions, Dr. Ruel Swan. Greetings to everybody assembled here at this solemn ceremony. Uh, Prahotstix just said, you know, at times prepared messages tend to get lost. I had to abandon mine because of time constraints. So I'm going to talk about my teachers and off the cuff, yes, I'm sure. You know, after my experience with them, I can go on the whole day talking about them. Firstly, I would like to, on behalf of former students, the Sema Melong, to convey our condolences to the Kumalo family and to thank them for remembering us during this time of mourning. What's interesting is that people ask me to send their condolences, even students who never met this couple because of the legacy they left at Mamelo Rakban or location. Let me start off by saying, just briefly, talking about Mrs. Kumalo, our mathematics teacher. Oh, and to add, yes, she was all about figures. She also taught us arithmetic. She was quite good at it. Mathematics, that is. Uh, there was a point when she covered a section on circles and then we had heard something about this other name she's got and then she drew the circle and then started saying you see it's circumference leg oh we said there we go we conquer this is where it all comes from it became official even for us as new students at Mamelong who circumference. And that's how we refer to her up to this day. Uh, the way, you know, her passion for mathematics was such that when some of us left Mamelong to go and do metric, we couldn't find schools where mathematics was offered in English. But we started doing Veskende. That's mathematics in Africans. And guess what? No problem for us. We just sailed through because of the foundation, the basis that circumference had laid on for us. Let me leave it at that for circumference because of time constraints, go to our English literature teacher, later became Prof. Kumar. I remember we had one prescribed book titled 
nine detective stories. Man, he made these stories to just come alive. And we ended up naming ourselves after some of the characters. So you can imagine, whenever we're sitting doing a test or exam on the nine detective stories, you only had to look to your side, and somebody would dream on, oh, Uslex. I'm writing about Uslex here. We couldn't go wrong, you see. And Prof Kumalo, you know as much as he taught us literature, but basically he was just an English teacher, all and all. Inside and outside the classroom. See, and then let me talk about him as our school principal. Uh, right, maybe I need to mention this as well. You know, as a couple, terms we found them very interesting. Like for some strange reason, our mathematics period was always followed by English. And that was Mr. Kumalo's English class. So was a conference had the tendency. You don't I scared his principal. And she would be carrying on there. And a voice would be heard from the direction of the door or the window next to the door, saying, Mrs. Kumalo. <laughs> Man, circumference would scramble for her books. As in as you have a to answer, she would just cut his pale. But then, silently saying, Man, we wish you a long gone. Because as she continued, it meant more work for us. You see, and should be out of the classroom. But talking about O principal, we're to Kumal. You know, I don't know, this man had something. You know, if you visited our school during school hours, it would be so quiet, you'd think it's during school holidays. Anywhere there, all classes occupied. But uh, program director, allow me to say this. You know, times I'd be deceitful or being modest to say we had respect for Prof. Kumana. No, don't get me wrong. We were scared of the men. <laughs> and you ask me today, I don't know why we're scared of him. But we always found solace in the fact that we're not the only ones. Even our teachers were scared of him, including Yainembal, who circumference. <laughs> what turned it around for me was in 1968, he organized an excursion to Lorenzo Marx where we started knowing him better as a person, where he'd sit with us, playing cards, coaching us as we speak. If you say some, pronounce a word incorrectly in English, he would correct you. And from that day, I started respecting him. I was no more scared. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been here if I was still scared. That was a bit about circumference and Prof. Kumalo at Mamelung Nabin in Prakpan. Tula Standwa Sam is the next item by Dumisani Manana.
tu Sami tu la, tu tu la mi tu la, stand wa senti si yo yam. Thank you very much. The neighbor in Kahiso, Mrs. Bogi Nwabe. In the meantime, can I have the representative from parliament, Mr. Vosim Kize, to come hereafter, after a video that shall have been played, giving us a message from Parliament hereafter. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gibonge mpatuo selo, getuba engil tolili. Jengo Jeremiah na migenga saba maktiwa mamu nwabe, wazuzo kulmela i extension for wika khiso. Nga bega ngati ingi angingiza, nga malima nge ngwaze, ngati futi nsase mngane. Kepa nga fige lwa ilizu, logu tingi mngane nginja, logu ikiniso, gingu makeluan. Sibe ni ntlantla enkulu, uguti nde nwa waka kumalo, nwa waka msala, si shere nani, these two love beds. Tina sibe ni ntlantla extension four. Sibizwa ganja alwe kakiso, e extension 4. Yoguti stole le ngwati, e vule gile. Ama page wakona, ebe vule gaga mnandi, ende ubunga pume mde ninu waga kumalo, unga tolanga isfundo. Besine ntla ntla kakulu, lapo guna ma extra tickets, uputilize gute lendo, sisino ntla ntla be gute, tinasotolu pojo, sehambe no mama, no baba, Mabe yo sebenza, laba sebenza kona. Siti du, du gini. Alwe tlanga lunge eti. Sila seke lwe sonke. Kepa nkulu nkulu yazi. Imnyangu bichezi vulegi ile. Usbu siso, ubechezi ne smile. I hope that smile won't fade. 
nagubaben no guz booz uguti, got away mamma nobum nanu kulman no coquam. Hey, given in Atlanta, your kulman no mamma rose. She had a special name, Mang Bizangalo, because Osfundi sent me an extension for Ugvula, a matlab society. Utting got on over Lomun to Ukulile, Uzo attend a ganja, and believe you me when I say she will be the first one to get there. And as a one born and a pinny fell lenga, Umamoros was on Bona, Echo, we paint horse, a kegui during the week, who pet to mess, who petty greater, Uzo sevens. A figure sevens, you caught her age, Umamos fund the so goody, Umagnatua, Umtiso, we leglo a mozi, Ugale Uyaya, Uyo Vela, who assess the situation. You do not become nosy, who assess the situation, who humble petty sink. Pete no mess, pete ne potter. Unga expect to tall a gota yipa. Guti on the eve of the funeral. Patu messa wa con nemfatu giaco uyo sebens. Little did we know, guti gioti masse fanele tina, si pendule logas fundi segona, gantigio besogis cuts the covet. Gepas fundi lega cool go mama, silboni lutandu baba ebe nalo, be utumunge and la peca o sano five minutes nyanu kulma no mam. Zozwa, Ubaba, Tare, Tare, Atumam Agas, not too busy land. Kepa Wagunan, the git log. I welcome Yaga Mama and Gakoshua and welcome a young figure extension for because that place ye tend this. We have to go Uza Kel. Naming up and up and up and next door. Umbonu Mama, Kumalo, Umamu Polani, she's no more, may all rest in peace. No mama utaunyan. Oh mama bakuli limpele base gate in babis bab off bab off. Niti got a mina umieni ute un letter and a weni enja. Uma benge naba petis kaftinyan. Bazong well kama. A petis kaftina sama ke komunyu peti coke. I coca bangbuzanga ne flavor is zero. Should namfanengi puse. All right, my puse. It was very warm. That was sometimes in the 1990s. Although I was a bit angry for my man. I was angry for my man. I was angry for my man. I was retirement village. I was angry for my man. 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 I was angry Uyin umakelwan, sim fundil umakelwan in your temper, gooty, a patin as it all go mamma kumal, nez as I laugh. Uyin umakula, umakum, umakelwan, ukalu letting a pamgo go to toll. Sitigin him deni lalani gel neighbor, is a lip song, and a tea in go see in a bapa pum laum pum lelo a foot, or go the sun when less hock or bustin the same game pay for loyab. Sebong.
um, program director, Umdeni Wagamtungwa, the Komalo family, including extended families, members, distinguished guests from home and abroad, creative workers, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. We are gathered here today, not to mourn, but to celebrate the extraordinary life of a beautiful soul, the incredible Professor Mzilegas Kumalo, a composer extraordinary. Since his passing on last week, we have been inundated with messages of condolences from all corners of the country, bidding farewell to this patriot. This outpouring of tributes testifies to the fact that prophets indeed touched so many a multitude of lives. I am here to represent Minister Natim Tetwa, who could not be able to come here. So the message I'm delivering is from the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Minister Natim Tetwa. So he further goes on and say we should not find we should find solace in the fact that Professor Mzilegazi Kumalo leaves a lasting legacy in the creative industry. The celebration of the lives of our departed patriots is not just about the act of commemoration, but it is also about the recognition of their impact on the lives of those they left behind. Our grief should not overshadow professors' telling contribution to society. We were blessed to have him in our lifetime. He gave his all, his friends, family, and all those who were touched by his life memories, too beautiful to forget. His meshoric rise into becoming an iconic figure in the creative space was propelled by his innate humility and love for people. Professor Kumalo was a treasure to South Africa. His passing leaves a gaping hole in our creative industry. There are no words to express how to grieve for losing a giant and such an energetic soul. In an African idiom, we do say when someone elderly passes on, the library has been burned. So we convey our heartfelt condolences to the Kumalo family at the difficult time your loss is a loss to the nation and the world at large. Let's rejoice in the realization that Prof contributed meaningfully to humanity during his lifetime. To this end, he bequeathed South Africa with a national anthem. A national anthem that had found its way through difficult times but he saw creation of such an anthem as a duty and a call to him. After, prof after the deputy president then had initiated a process at the instruction of former president Nelson Mandela that the song, the singing of both the stem as well as Gosi Segalela were too long. They needed to be shortened. There were five minutes or more at the time Professor, in his quest and using his utility and skillful composing talent, through his committee then, a path of a one minute, 35 seconds national anthem unifying all South Africans as a contribution to nation building was produced. This is a legacy he has left for generations to come. We have come here not to bury Prof Kumalo or to praise him as an individual. Instead, we have gathered here to show how we are at the apex of a vast pyramid of African struggle, self-determination, 
in development. We should not lose sight to the fact that Professor Kumalo belongs to a line of African intellectuals that went before him. I would have mentioned most, but time constraints, we can't. It is within this long line of prophetic composers and writers, as well as intellectuals, that we salute and celebrate these great creative souls that have always been part of our heritage. Mabuse May once said, this all-powerful contact with African-Americans could not make us remain where we were. It was advancing our goals and dreams, close quote. So in his compositions, he was in the forefront of redefining and rearticulating the monumental nation-building project exposed by Semi, constituting of a higher apex and complex life of existence. The pronouncements of that great son of the soil, Seme, are all coming in full circle, not a circumference, maybe a circumference, to reconnect our past with the present. We, the living, must realize this brighter future for all of the children of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we have not come to bury prof, but to give to reignite and implement the conceptual historical idea of the regeneration of Africa. This marks a historical and cultural turning point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fusi. Can I have Ua? And in November, Matiane. At the same time, can Dumsan Manana ascend the stage and sit right at the piano there in readiness, whilst Aunt Numa Venda Matiane delivers her tribute? bid farewell to a Salvation Army soldier. Ninbingelele, Ninbingelele umpatuwa selo, umiste mazopa, my brother from another mother. Ninbingelele, umso nishwa ubabu kok, kuta limsons. Ninbingelele mpinchi am, Sip hot sticks. You being a lady bandla lagiti, a salvation. I'm a salvation marshe. Interpreting for you, beautiful salvationists. You being a lele, I'm a tumwa, I'm blase, I'm a tumutum yang and daba, I'm kitchen machine concha and a gola sebe. On passing on your loom, Nititina, Sifileman, Sifile. But before I speak about my brother, I'd like to make a tribute to my sister in law. Mina was raised by this woman. See, Pistol Masaki. She took me on when I was to do my JC. Junior certificate, and now you're getting junior certificate in our grades. So I lived with them. 
And I learned many things except mathematics. I mean, I know arithmetic, short division and long division. But Sissy taught me many things, and one of the many things she taught me was how to make tomato gravy. I shy a sham. Sissy was a wonderful woman. But I'd like to concentrate on the years when my brother was sick. And I promise you, I'm not going to cry. I've seen my brother deteriorate year by year. And I saw Usisi be strong, being strong all those years. But I remember one particular day when Buti was in hospital. And after eating, Usisi took a toothpick and removed food from my brother's teeth. When we were driving home, I said to my daughter, but I could never do that. But Usisi did it. But Uputuetu was clean. Where he was, all because of this woman. She looked after our brother, Sia Bonga Mastuaba, for giving us such a wonderful, wonderful woman. Usisi did not look after Uputi for one year or two. She looked after Uputi for many, many years. Sia Bonga Masala. Sia Tembo Gutabanta Nabako. By Toshile Leon Togu, your Tando, Nognagegel. Sia Bonga. Now I'd like to talk about my brother. Tina was a family that kisses. So when we meet, we'd always be kissing. And each time uh, my turn came, I would go to putting it. Here comes your favorite sister. Ati, obegawase man. Uzong kabani sana lababantu. Intanda noonke. That's a pendula ngiti. I perceive myself to be your favorite sister. End of the story. How can you deal with perceptions? Perception is a perception. Uputube standa she. Uputube utandu mde nwa ke. Bese nga konzi. Not that ube nga statis. Ube si tetisa. Kodwa. Ube si tanda. Uputi didn't call us by our names. But the duet. Sazi ge guti ge. I don't recall but it Carol or Noma Venda. God, Ume Kuluma Nami, he would say so. God, and the end continent, no, we that way. Just as he didn't call Uma, Ma. He would, okay, okay, no, he would say when he talks about Uma, at my mother, Sipega and the city band. He's, he's, he's the only one, Ozala Lunkoskas. So, Upu to his turn. And he looked after us. He was the glue that kept us together. He attended our achievements. When our children were going to university, he was the glue that The other day, my daughter's friend was reminding her, hey, we went to visit to see your uncle, and when we left, he gave you 100 rand and he gave me 50 rand. So Uputi was very giving. To a, to, you know, he was generous to a, to a, to, to, to a, to a point. Abantana mm -hmm. Beshata, Uputi would be there. And at Akipe Imali, at Le Yinkomwe Yamantungwe, Esivaleli Sangayo, Umshan. The other day, I was interviewed by a, a, one of the white journalists, and I was trying to say to him, Uputi ube saba ishazo in English. I said, scandal, no. Disgrace, no. It doesn't do. Ishazo, Uputi ube saba ishazo. Kumbula ngelini langa, ondaba. This time, ondaba was my mother. 
Uchala uputukuti e. You know, ubu ila ubu utulsile, ubu yenu nendo ta umlungu, basala kwa kero. And uputi confronted me. I hear that you've got a white man staying in your house. How can you do that? <laughs> now, I said to him, trying to be smart, do you have a problem that the man is white? Or what? No. How can a woman in a lower language to stay at your place? It's wrong. I can not call this and I come on your call this. I got to ask a bantu and a bunch and I'm done with a figure. How to say go away with the appendage? We are meg. What I want to my solo will be the womb queen and then everything was fine. Uputi was a believer. Uputi was a tender. In 1978 to 1979, my family went through a very difficult time. We had a brother-in-law who had to be hanged. I use the word hang advisedly because he had to be hanged, hung pal. During that time, U Solomon Masang was to be hanged. So we used to meet no Mrs. Masang at Pretoria Central Prison. Many times Uputi would go down on his knees and pray with U Mrs. Masang. Mrs. Masang was alone at Pretoria Central Prison. And most of the time he was surrounded by us, Amantungwa. Sio Buana would go to visit our brother-in-law. So we, we would, they would open the, the, the gates at two o'clock and we would all move in. And Uputu would say, when, when, when the prisoners were, were, were had assembled a quick waiting room, we'd say, let's pray. And he would hold the hand of Mrs. Mashang and pray with her. So that's really cutting us in same. When my brother-in-law was hung, my sister disintegrated, and she became a drunk. So we go to Puti and hey Puti, umusa, umusa yapuza, nye, 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 nye. Puti said, Nina, ani zula ngala umusa e zule kona. I ask one of you, to be in, his, in her shoes for five minutes, and then you can come and tell me what you must oppose. But Uputi didn't stop there. They took Umtanaga Musa, who was about four years old, they raised him like their own child. That's our brother. Holding us together, keeping us together. Uputi was a principled man, and Uputi knew Stafsak, he knew his rights. Any to whom I'm Sabum Lungupu, I'm shem. For instance, Umar once said to him, Sister Pretoria Central Prison, but you can't be praying here. Abelungu, Angebatand. So nobody can stop me and tell me where to pray. I'm going to pray wherever I want to pray. So one time we were traveling to Zululand and we missed our turn. We went past a traffic cop and we missed our turn. Uputi then comes back and he goes to the traffic cops and he says to him, excuse me, these are white traffic cops, I'm talking 1970 something. Excuse me, uh, we're trying to find the road to Abese to Omunyu traffic cop Omlung. Where's your driver's license? Uputi, you must think I'm mad. I come all the way and come and give you my, my license, Pasuga Tamba. Then we drove off where to ask elsewhere where the road, the, the road we, we needed. We used to have meetings. There's a particular meeting at Iskat. Oh, no, I'm wrong. We one of one of our nieces has a problem with her husband, he's having an affair. So we call, she calls us to a meeting. So we assemble there and she, she starts telling us how the husband is misbehaving, blah, 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 blah. And then Uti, one of my sisters, I won't mention names because I still want to be in talking terms with them. 
Uti, Uti, one of them, Uti. No, to solve this problem, let's take a shambok, all of us, and go and assault this woman who's messing uh, the life of our, of our nephew. Atu Puti, you can do that, but cut me out. I'm not about violence, mean. End of the story. But I want to end my talk on a very poignant moment. The Salvation Army was celebrating its centenary in London at the Wembley Stadium. Salvationists from all over the world were in London. And the first day of the celebrations, all the Salvationists from all over the country had to uh, march in according to countries. The first group to, to, to enter were Americans, and they were waving their stars and stripes. Then followed the, 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 the British with their Union Jack, and then the Swiss, and the what have you, and the what have you. And there came the South Africans, humbly walking past the general and the dignitaries of the Salvation Army. They did not have their flag. The reason being, Um Ziligaza said, we are not going to carry the South African flag. This is not our flag. I'd like to end by saying, Uputi may not have held the South African flag in, at Wembley in 1979, but he died having waved the South African flag that he voted for. Alfred, <laughs>
Thank you. Can I now have the following people coming forward as a cluster? Mama's niece for the Masala family, Mrs. Queen Sutsweri, please come to the podium, followed by Tando Kumal on behalf of the grandchildren. And as they approach the stage, I will quickly take this opportunity to, to make a few acknowledgements. Allow me to acknowledge the honorable presence of MMC Margaret Arnold, who is here as a member of the Mayoral Council, a champion for community development, arts, culture, and heritage. And then also allow me to acknowledge the honorable presence of CEO of the Johannesburg Theatre Company, a person I know very well, a person I've shared some moments with in the artistic space, Oliswan Duneningema. And then also, let me acknowledge the honorable presence of HOD of Gauteng Department of Sport, Arts and Recreation, Ms. Ikopeleng Masisi. Thank you for gracing this event. Thank you so much. Over to you, ma'am. Medicis, <laughs> Meba tewa joalo hufisela basisa Nigel. Me haba haba le madikwe. Ntatemo holo chali, ntatemo holo kudu. Chali masala. Wila kopa na lingkono. Wana mukoto. Kanyalo. Ise. Haba fisa Nigel, yaba mo mewa mangwa ni ditar linta toa hai ba kopa nanteng ba hule lanteng mangwa ni ditari liba na ba abo ba chalwa teng rona hai ni rimisa mangwa 
بابم بم میزا مامو هلودی تر بنا بابان بم میزا دی تر می خورو لیا ها با ایلنگ ما خوکلو سو نم میزا اواری ها هلا و نشولیا هر اوسی دی تر اره اواری رموزی بیله کسلا ایو ایله اواری Batlo hana ijele batla mea ton, number six. Mea ton ili litraka se teitini fela, number one to number thirteen. Listraka se so holo ka haramuzi hutu ki big street. Bafi sabaka la skolo mo nuno. Di kolo ne di lepe di fela ili lower primary ili higher primary. Ham mewaka o mawan di tara amu salam murau akreta standard six. Aya boarding school u Saint Peter's. Ham mawan akreta standard six. Haki sebe hubani ingliye na nasa utrisis. Ntate mo holo i frame tepe masala ntatai. Aluman sa meno ahana ayas kolo. Mangwana atletasle mo kamara standard 60 asake ni school. Kaham mewaka ana ale boarding school. I se sa tile leng haa fila asla ha school on atle di holiday in. Alle la mewaka kataba ena ya usike ni school. Me abar mvitar. Hai ba utile ubatla ya school on. Ere hanta ate asla el laka kolo i. I am, I can I can't I am. Oh, my telecolo in all the whole. What about my one on a is a jalo and a man one on a corner of a dramatic in a very civil way. Only Larry Joel look at my colina go on that demo like an agacolo yamulel. Tete loan, tete mohlo abare. Handle nte di tar. Taba hauki. Abare kas fatano na kwa tayari skolo. Abare chay usali le usaluki. O tayari skolo nsele mwenzela. Kiha mwana tayari topo. Ine bizo topo. Kaur kienele ona high schoolu. Kudi high schoolu vali ne di le pedi. Ile topo ile frina keng. Kan kanya na hufri na hangu tu kirozdin, and then ili wilba force. Mangu na ya topo atleta metriki, atu la pele aya normal college. Liselu kuli orba kopani kai li rangwani. Itengi mo no obisharingi leka uboluka na ku. Huyaka ena haripete la mangwani. Baratani di limoze ne lirangwani pili akona wea normal college. Pili ya normal college. Limoze ne seo ne baratana kama ngolo. Ne ba ngola, nakana kwe nunu ngola no haholo. And then rangwani analimulili mozwa le hutuki boy sana. Wahanta temuta uu. Jale boy sana atu sa to keep the link going. Hufisha laka ufela bora le boisha na ba ya normal college ba ya sabu teacher ba kaeta huo hufisha na kwa yao banyali mawana ni aloa hakumalo ba hufisha ba mo amuhe la lehi le le urukana kwa eo hunyalo kimo rafu omo kimo shaba omo ine lintwe satwa ile ang ine bila ichalingwa kabo hali impaba kumalo ba mo amuhe la kadi atlasi pedi afisa mo ya ba sisi uduti mo sixty three years mawane hana katla haya alimu Unaweza ba hantu rakika kuti la hai alimu, uti la alimu hubanda rangwani atwari leki mabag, rangwani hatu tama baka uta ba atlatu mlaata. Sena kau fela se ankero adibuilenga mkaka rangwani, 
le mangwana ona le fela jwalo ke kopa re se ka dipheta ha ba tswa di ba rona me wa ka asamae mangwane a re touyane a mathaka mona ka ha mosala a mathaka mona ha khumalo a matha ha setshedi gore a mathela bana ba bona tshe ka nna ke nyetswe ha setshedi a mathela ba nyetsweng ha ha simelane gore a re mathela ka o fela ene phakong la hae a matha le rangwane james ra qala ra ba le bana ra qala ra ba le mesebetsi ya bana ne ba matha tsenana ke nyetswe ha manskral emparangwane le mangwane ba mpoloketse me wa ka le ntatwa ka ba ntswalang ba boela ba mpolokela ma tswala ka le ratswala ka manyalo ka o fela a setshedi e singla ka fela ba kenetse manyalo a bana ba bo mangwana ka ka o fela ba kenetse gore ne re sa tsebohetsa ntho ka ntle le ho mangwana mangwana had to be there mangwana le rangwana ba tso nya di sa ke le Petersburg mangwana was the link mo di family link ka o fela ke thutileng ka mangwana ka pa rona di tlogolo tsa masala re thutileng ka mangwana ha mo le rangwana ba ne ba sa kgetheng kuka pere ba ne ba sna taba ro ngwana wa khomo ka po ngwana wa mpa ba na ba ha masala ka o fela le ditlolo le ditlolo ana sa teng e ne le bana ba bona ba na ba khumalo le ditlolo ana sa teng e ne e le bana ba bona ba ne ba le jwalo ha rangane a linka ka mona mangwane o ne a linka ka mona mangwane was a math teacher extraordinary le se le utlwile hore brakpane ne ba mmitsa circumference mangwane o rutile le evatone ka nako e telele evatone ne ba mmitsa board mass board mass e ke formula e kgolo ya mathematics how dila le di complex expressions b for brackets o for of d for division m for multiplication a for addition and s for subtraction how can a class in your mess high school that's the first formula e o tlo irutiwang jwa le ba tone ne ba mmitsa board mass fela tshe ka brakpane ne ba tshatse be khumalo ba tse ba ba sa mmitse ka lebitso la khumalo ba mmitsa ka circumference e ba tone ne ba mmitsa ka board mass ha ntso re ma khumalo wa balahla jwa le ba haetso ke rata le o ta be nya ya 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 ho ruta mangwana na ruta mmetse he a ruta english mara ona le nthengwe batho ba sa itsebeng hohle mo mangwane aneng a ruta teng ona e ma di khwairi mona a thusana le tsona from beginning to end skolon sa o qetela sa rutileng ho sona ka giso madiba comprehensive school teng o ila etsa feko ka ho thusa ka ka nthwena ka 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 mino batho ba ba motse ba ba ka giso ba district ena khrukas do ba motse ba tsebang ka metse le ka ho thusa di khwaire ka ho bina matongwa ke le setloholo sa masotwaba le e frame tshepe masala re rata o le leboha ka mogone le rata mangwane ka teng ka mogone le mohlompha ka teng 
Come holy pizzing Liena. Sixty three and a half years. Kahot Reali Lebo. Mawani will a yinkela sefapano. Mawani will as a dicano, Bupilomba, hi, check a mang le mang, I as a dicano. Dicano sana ridiesa, hands refita di milestones eating. Will as a cano, I already know about a route, a canapo, how pass it stand at six, or no route, Leona, but one a queen, no never bala a royal, royal reader. Never was why check a mahoa. Impa Mawani, we lay as a can or stand at six as a mulukela, Obata of Fita Mo. I as a can or our Obata over Emu, Wabama, Lobama teacher, and mathematics. Go high school. I as a can or Yahoo Bata Unyala. I as a can or Yahoo Atisa Lapa. I as a can or Yahoo Hudisa Lapa Lena Loli Loli Ruta. A esa kano ya upila le matungwa hante. A esa kano ya ushokome la rangwane, harangwane ane afokola. Haka murata fela hane baza malifati jigelele. Udi peti ili di kano za hai. Roba laka khoto mangwane. Ditar. Awari. Musulu di wa montuedi. Rili baha musala rea ulukula. Riritlama li teka ulitise. Ushebe pili. Uhaba lema ni mautu anzuin huofisa ten. Mutaun wa ramukheli. Likulu koto anila makoba usia. Asa jinsi mwato sama ubani. Iring ata aja. Hutehe miriti eni nyani. Lea di otuan. Ya lebo. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are terribly behind schedule. I hate to say this, but can we try and... Uh, be very conservative on time. I know emotions are running very high about our departed beloved. Now, without any waste of time, let's have Tandi Kumal. Can we have Sbongiseni and Buso Kwabe on stage and then to be followed by Utiliza Kumalo in quick succession, in quick succession. Galtemba go in a town, Mubu, as you matum to us, was his. Sanbonan. My grandparents were very generous people who loved children. They loved having us at their house, and we were welcome to visit in our numbers whenever we wanted to. Their front door was literally always open. I remember going there to meet with my cousins. We would sit in the TV room where we would play and hear Mkulu's footsteps moving towards us and then walking past slowly to the end of the passage where he would always emerge with treats. When I was younger, the end of the passage was a magical place where Mkulu would, would disappear and reappear with sweets. I imagine that this was the case for many of the children who frequented their house. It was such routine that one day when Mkulu took a little longer than usual to get up and walk to his magical place, my younger brother Ugutula, who was then a toddler, took him by the hand and led him there himself. Mkulu was very amused by this and proceeded to make sure that he got up before Ugutula would remind him after this. He loved us so much that he thought of us even when he was busy with his music and travel. We would get very excited to hear that Mkulu was going on an international trip because he made sure to bring us all back a piece of the places he traveled to. He brought back Kenta dresses from Ghana, 
hoodies and t-shirts from the US, silk dresses from China, and somehow he always got all our sizes right. He gave the best birthday presents, and as busy as he was, if he was invited over for a birthday party, he would be there on time and made sure we felt special as he led the birthday song with his beautiful tenor singing voice. Nkulu gave us gifts for academic achievements too. So when your report was good, you made sure to take it to him. Not only to make him and Goko proud, but to collect your reward. My grandparents made such a great pair because Goko was just as generous in the kitchen. Goko fed us even if we said we were full. When visiting her, she would greet you in the lounge and before you were finished greeting Umkulu, she would emerge from the kitchen with her delicious queen's cakes and cold drink. It was like a superpower. You hadn't even noticed that she had left the room. Come to think of it, my grandparents were really good at re-emerging from rooms with treats. Goko also made the best maguinas and dombolo. They were light and fluffy. She had the Midas touch when, it, when she was baking, which made eating on a full stomach much easier. Goko was a very wise and insightful woman, the kind of woman you hope to become when you grow up. She had a sharp memory and had a knack for turning unfortunate situations and negative experiences into lessons and anecdotes that she applied and taught to others. She was an incredible storyteller, one of my favorite. I often turned Gogo and Mkulu into assignment topics because I knew it would be an opportunity to get more stories out of her. She told me stories about her childhood, the shop that my great-grandmother owned, stories about her father Tsepe, and circumstances in her life that made her love school and education. I would interview her and Mkulu about their careers, how they met, their long journey together as students, teachers, and about the music. Goko was always available to give me all the details and painted, painted a clear picture of these journeys for me. Even when we were just there for a casual visit, I would sit next to Gogo, and after all the niceties of greeting, catching up, eating on a full stomach, she would perk up, put her hand on my arm, and start telling me a story that somehow had a major life lesson at the end, like clockwork. As we grew older and got busier, the topic started slanting towards marriage and family. She would remind me that they wouldn't be around forever and that she would like to go to more of her grandchildren's weddings. Hint, hint. When she missed us, she would call the house and whenever I would answer, she would tell me to come visit her. I suspect she had more stories to tell and more food to feed me. The greatest feeling that my grandparents have left me with are gratitude and pride. I feel so lucky to have experienced these two incredible human beings at the same time. I feel grateful to have been a recipient and direct beneficiary of their generosity in love and in kindness. Goko and Mkulu, thank you for living exemplary lives that have led to our existence. Thank you for raising our parents, Auntie Busi, Auntie Nontla, Antla, Babungan Temba, and my father, Deliza. Thank you for the love and tenderness you gave to us, your grandchildren. Thank you for being parental figures and grandparents to others beyond us. Your hearts were so big that you could share your love with all the children you came across. Thank you for setting a standard. Thank you for all the fond memories. We're going to miss you so much. To my cousins and siblings, Sbusiso, Tulani, Dutugo, Mbuso, Svuile, Kamaku, Sbomiseni, Lwazi, and Ubutula. Do not despair. Goko and Mkulu will forever be with us as they will forever be together. May we continue to live in their love, their wisdom, and their kindness. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, 
with powers in, uh, invested on me, the following is going to obtain. Uh, quickly, can I have word delays? Was on foot, Ulande, or Nom Tandas of Maj. They said, Good go, get look on to the Sigu Cockerland when you went there in the Waluk. Yeah, you can go that side in Vanagate. And as you walk that side, can I give you an assignment where it is? If any material black office double quartet has been archived, I implore you where it is to unarchive it. It is so unfortunate that South Africa does not know about the black offias, a very powerful male double quartet. Yagakumalo, Ekula no Chablan Mazibo, if a space. If a Telabun, Tatima Duman, Matlas. If a one ten ago, Edkin Murare, no Pushima Petre. Pushima Petre is the only one who is alive now as we speak. Besaguti, the basis, Basu Profundus of that double quartet, Ube Solomon Zulu and Mayomiza. South Africa doesn't know that. That's the greatest mishap. Deliza, I implore you, Mfanagit, if it's well possible to archive that and bring it to the fore, it will be the greatest favor we shall have done to the fraternity of song. Over to you, Mfanagit. Mbonge kwena, mbonge mantungwen, mbonge wabagam sala, mbonge salvation army, Mbonge mpagati wongan. Eh, mpela usu u olinzi makti na lulu. Kotoa nizo za maguti nge nkoko njengiti kapu. Mbaba no mama njenge nga niyabo. Nite uma nkaba nga ngabo nga kumbula usu u guzo bongwa I think bo we 50th <coughs> yabo. And my mom was real worried. And so I come into the house and I say, Mom, what's the problem? And she says to me, Ubabu zoche labandu kutinga mkoma, first day mayeng shele. And I got quite curious. So I turned around and I said, did you? She says, yes, I did. <laughs> now, during those times, I know that it was not done. Even during my times, that was generally not done. But my mom was still worried about that after they'd been married for 50 years, and she didn't want people to know about it. But your mama said, no, I, I agreed to your father because I knew we're not going to meet again. And, and you've heard that for the next four years, they actually met by letters only. But the relationship went on, and eventually, my father facilitated that my mom be accepted at normal college. He spoke for her uh, with the principal. But there was a problem, you see. My mom had weak mathematics marks. And my dad promised that she would tutor him when, he came, when she came to normal college. And he went on to do that. And eventually, my mom became the maths teacher who was called Bodmas and Circumference. And how she ended up becoming that maths teacher was a result of the support that she got from my father. They were an incredible team. You know, mom recognized dad's love for music. She, she actually said it in one of the nation building um, uh, functions where they were celebrating Ubaba. And she said, Ubaba's love, first love is music. And then she said, I am the second love. And, and she was a smart woman. Instead of competing with the first love, she joined the first love. She sang in almost every choir that he conducted. And she went to every competition that he went. Hmm? And so, especially during the days of Tuata Special, 
Hmm? And she also traveled a lot with him when he went overseas. Now, when we grew up, we understood that supper is eaten at six in the evening, early evening because our parents are going to practice. It was a standard thing, choir practice. In Prakpan, I remember on do me, so they used to look after us. And when we grew up, myself and Busi, we joined the Soweto songsters and our children understood choir practice. And so even now, I can't eat my supper after seven. And it started off from the time being a kid that supper was eaten around six so that at seven o'clock they should be and eventually I also had to be at choir practice. I just wanted to share this, Ubusi shared this uh, composition, composition Gababa, which was his very, very first. His first composition was when he was a young boy. Mkulu was a very strict person who used to, uh, to, 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 to speak loudly with them. And he used to wake them up very early and bafan, ni lalewenza, zon papa zamaka. And, and my dad, being a composer, he used those words for his first song. And it goes, Bafan, Bafan, Nilale Luguenzan, Gisonipoko Samakanda. Yeah, each of our parents played a role, you know. Uh, Umama was, was the one who was a homemaker and uh, she also ran the home and meted out discipline and punishment. And in the evening, she always reported to Ubaba. And, and that was a terrifying moment when Ubaba comes back and he's told about the day and, and he's going to be told about the trouble that you are in. And I must admit, I was in a lot of trouble most of the time. And um, the, the nice thing is that most of the time Umama was the one who used to meet out the punishment. And Ubaba would not punish you after Mama has punished you. Uh, and Padu Mama was really a strong punisher. I learned a trick and I want to share this one. I learned that if you, you just cry, you get more punishment. And, and she would take a break and talk to you and then punish you again. And, and so I learned that trick with you. When she was beating me, I would just open my legs so that it hits me somewhere. I said, ah, mama, 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 you have touched me. And then she'd say, what happened? What happened? And she'd feel guilty. And uh, I'd be saved for the day. Oh, mama never, ever spoke ill of Ubaba Giti. Ubaba never spoke ill of Umama. We knew that sometimes they did not agree about certain things, but they never disagreed about raising us in front of us. They always worked together as a team. And uh, you know, Ubaba used to use the word, darling, my bizuma. Uh, we know that that term, darling, is a term of endearment. And, and, and when people are happy, they use it as a nice term. But most of the time when people are angry, that darling becomes your name, you know? So a person says, we're not darling one day now, wait. <laughs> it has now become your name. But Ubaba, it never changed. Even when they were in the midst of a conflict, the darling was really a gentle term of endearment. Umama respected Ubaba to the last day. You know, Ubaba lost his speech for about six years. But even during the time when Ubaba had lost his speech, Umar treated Ubaba as though he, as, as just as she had treated him all along. She spoke to him, you know, and, and with respect, with dignity. It never, ever changed. And what it did is that not even with us also, it was exactly the same way even when he could not take care of himself. Ma taught us a lot of powerful things. Ma and Baba, they were both very, very kind. 
And I wanted to share this one with Baba. Baba, you know, <laughs> he would go to the bank and withdraw a couple of hundred rand and change it into five rand coins. And he would go to Vet Porky, to the unemployed people. And they knew him. Each time when his car stopped, they would form a queue. And he would give each one of them a five rand coin. And that's the extent of his kindness. I'm not talking about the kindness he, he extended to the family members and to the extended family. But he had this, and the church too, but he had this desire to serve other people that he did it everywhere. Tina Jenga Bantuana Bagam Zilgazi are blessed to have witnessed so much love between these two lovebirds. See, I can Gumnandu Banabazal Bako, Bessin e Temba Loguti Sazo Sala Nabuganan. Gotwa Sia Bong Gunkulunkul. You know, I was saying to a friend of mine, my parents raised me until I was grey haired. Two days ago, I became a pensioner. Two days ago. And my dad and mom stayed with us until I also became a pensioner. What else can I ask for? I'm sorry to Thank you, Tilisa, for an enlightening tribute about him, Dabaza Sekai. Thank you so much. Nom Tandas. Oh, Mark Shaw, what Tilisa, who to Baba, who be Michelle, and no Mamma may be. How Umga may be. My wife is singing out of tune. Kubera to Mazar. Gabonga program director. Gibingelele Ibangan Ibanza Longana. E Gu Sugu Olupsunga Kulugitina as the Salvation Army because we have lost Obaba Obe Koto Mogwe Bantla. O Baba no Mama, a baby, Miss Elega Kulu, and Gonzuin, a baby's Nigel and a Kogonke Abanako, and Gonzuin Gangulungul. O Baba no Mama, they were staunch Christians. O Bunge Gubasuganis and Gonzo. O Kogonke Beba Gwenza, Beba Gwenza, Betembe Ungulungulu, Bebega Ungulungulu, and Pambil. Sikula and Jenati, Sikula. Si konji swa leo nlela yuguti umtembe unkulunkulu ngezi nlela zonke. Ubaba enkonzwe nietu nzo, nzo kuluma ngayo kwa manje ube ngusongsta lida. E, ubaba usifundi sile. He was a teacher. He taught us a lot of things. Si ama songsters. He brought a lot of music to the choir. Omunye si ze si silega nesoto. Si ti manje lagu Uvuge ulpale ngayizolo uzosifundisa lona the following day. Eh ubaba ubethatha umculo wase Salvation Army. Awujike athatha amachunzi athize. Awujike awufake sizulwini because most of the, the the music was Salvation Army is in English. Ubaba would take that music. Awushintsha awufake esintwini ukuthi sikwazi ukucula ngesintu ubaba be advocate in the Bayoguti Sazi, Uguti Sama Africa, and be proud of, be, of being Africans. And the singer Lash Lumilate Uma Uboma Ma Oom, 
ube umamo no tando. Boguti no masi hamba siyo tula, no masi gune, gune rehearsal. If kuno gula o gukona, oma will make it a point good everybody eats. Ubezo kubiza no mangbo nguti minangati ngea shala zongo beng sabu gula, abu ya ati giyama zige lo agari, woza nali plate. Bogu abaza alabanjalo mina as a person ngitole ukfutu mala ekaila waga kumalo. Bengu mdo ana waga kumalo, everybody knows. And to an extent, Oguti, when, I when I got educated, in fact, when I went to university, Obama organized some funding for me to go and study. Oh, Richard Koch was one of the people who funded me. Oguti, ngegwazo ukoba i fundo zami. Ngeplunga kulu, because when I took over Gui uh, position yake as a songster leader, it was said, give me, because I could not consult with Obam Kumalo anymore to say, Baba, maseso gunje gwenzu wanjan. It, it, it's so painful. When maso wia guyo umbuga nje, the only thing ebe ingwazi guti ing keep te going was the smile ebe ngisbona emeshene ake each and every time. And I said to myself, I still have to go on. I have to keep going. No magunjani, ung nigile indugu. There was a day, I think Jengen is just an example. There was a day in Konzoeni, songsters were singing, so I was conducting. So he was sitting there, when I conducted, I conducted, and then he stood up. He came to me, and then he gave me the walking stick. And then to me, what does it mean? He said, what does it mean? Take the stick and continue. So, give me na nipsunga kulo na basalbam, nipsungo pat. I'm grateful because they have taught me a lot of things. In fact, na ngapanze, gimile in the outside world and gimile ema kwaye ni in everything because ubab kuma luang pevela inle. I'm who I am because of these parents. I'm grateful. And in Gibonga, na bantu na baga bab kuma lugu. They shared ubaba nam. Azang ebabe na bati lo oanga panda smaz. Even the family abum tungo ngiting figi le gazuguti gifige kaya. I'm grateful. Angina wamaz amaningi because kuningi ebesi zokulu mama jenge ngayes kat. Kuningi enzo melingi kat. Ubaba got a lot of awards. Ubaba was a perfectionist. Ubaba wenga kufuni into a half-baked. To an extent, uguti, when abantu ana gune le tuli la lfige la liti, ewe puti mnangi hamba, no wati ka, ka. Angu azu tula lo ndoleyo. Tina sifunu tula, abagwa misebe funugu nglobo la ayu tuwe puti nghamba na awo yindu enjanle. So that was ubaba, ngenlela, waye fundi sangayo, eno guti waye eno laga. Waye nga ifuni nte nga enga hambi gati. Ati ekwaye ni, ati waye kumele si pimbele unkulu nkulu. Asi wazi ugumpimbela unkulu nkulu. Utu wena minangia pimba ngpimbeli nkosi. Unkulu nkulu aga mfunu mundo pimba. So, ulo baba mina engmazi. And we will continue mtu unwa ni legacy yako. Usinige ogunini. Ubaba mina, I said to myself, masengi mbone nga sawazu kulu mangati utulule gonke. Ugutulule, utululu wazi loake. Utululu, usinige wonga amatulu. Usinige gonke. Use zandlin zetu uguti sikichi masifika pingako. Sia bonga kakulu bomtungo. Ngako gonke, sia bonga nugu sinigezela ngoputu wenu, ngobaba wenu, ngomkulu wenu. Sia bonga si sizo, sizo bamba lapo, si kube la ayetu na kona. Nkulungulabusis. Right, thank you. Because of time constraints, this is what is going to happen now. As we call Kennel Calls, just to give us, I don't want to say a brief someone, it's not fair. We have devout Christians here, yeah? we've got devout the children of God, it wouldn't be proper to put a scissors on a sermon. What I would do, I would ask Kennel Calls to come up and give us a, a fully fledged sermon the best way he can under the circumstances and then as he does that, this was as part of the of the sermon.
Ja, kan je prik. Hey. I'm told there's a backtrack. Only be described with one word: soul staring. Soul staring, indeed. 
Over to you, Colonel. And I, Thank you, Bob. I take it the family will defer the reading of, 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 of the what to call the obituary or shall be taken as read. I wonder what will be the pleasure, guard me to Lisa, because of the time constraints. Thank you very much. Proceed, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Baba Matropa. Thank you, Kumalo family, for the opportunity given to me to share the word of God with you. Firstly, I would like to pass the greetings from our territorial commander, the leader of the Salvation Army in the whole of South Africa, in the name of Colonel Daniel Casuso and Colonel Tracy Casuso. They send their condolences to the family. And also my lovely husband, who could not be here today because of the number, he also said, I must say this to you that he is grateful to have known these great people. Ubaba, Ujimi, Nomama Rose, Kumalo. When he was sick in hospital, he could not even brush his own teeth. They came in the middle of July and visited him, and that made a mark in his life. And today we stand here uh, speaking about them. Here, we have come to celebrate their life. And here, we have come to say, thank you, Lord, for the people that you gave to us in, in the caliber of the Kumalus. And for that, we thank you. Now, as, as, as I come today, I promise I will not be long. I will try. By all means, sometimes they call me professor of... Uh, I can't be long. I've been told I can't be long. I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to speak to you about hope. Staying positive in the midst of hardship. We have a pandemic these days that, that is all over the world. Uh, it, it changed everything. It disorganized people's lives. It disorganized marriages. It disorganized families. And... and these days we're talking about a new norm. Even today, it wouldn't have been here if, uh, like this if it wasn't for the pandemic. It, it, it re, it, we had to readjust uh, the way of living because of this pandemic. There's social distancing. There's washing of hands a thousand times a day. There's wearing of masks. People want to see this woman who's talking, but they can't because now there's a mask that I've put on. We, we, we have lost loved ones. We, 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 we've been attacked by this pandemic. The, uh, uh, the disease is all over. People have lost hope. People have, have, uh, 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 are saying it's, it's, it's not easy. Yes, it is not easy. But there is hope. We, we, we're staying positive in the midst of hardship. Staying positive is believing that there is one who is above. There is one who is Jesus, who, who gives us hope. His name is hope. Marilyn Monroe says, in spite of everything, life is not without hope. Hope is the one thing that can help us get through the darkest of times. Bishop Desmond Tutu says, hope is being able to see that there is light despite of all, despite all of the darkness. Once you choose hope, anything is possible. Once you choose hope, anything is possible. And, and, and what is hope? Who is this hope? Jesus is our hope. Charles Spurgeon says, without Christ, there is no hope. 
pretender. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid. Uno sad. Uku tiksasa guzanani. Babu konu nkulu nkulu. Awa ziksasa. Ogbe seko na pambili kule loksasa. Psalm 146 verse 5 says, Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in Bazanwan, whose hope is in the God, the Lord Jesus. In Psalm 42, verse 11, it says, My soul, why are you disturbed? Why are you perturbed? Why Udangele Gangaka? As if there's no hope. There is hope. There is hope. That hope is Jesus. Now, why? The question is why should we put our hope in Christ Jesus? Why? Because He loves us. I don't know how much you believe this, but I do. He loves me, He loves you. How do I know that? He went to the cross to die for you. He, he, he went to the cross to buy you back. He went to the cross to redeem you. We are redeemed. We are brought back by this Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, it says, He loves us. He loves us. He died for us on the cross of Calvary. He brought us back. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15 says, When you were dead in your sins and in the circumstances of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He raised you up. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our, Ill, of our legal indebtedness, which means having canceled the written code that was written against us, that we will be nothing, that we will, we will die and never have life. But he canceled that. He took it from the accuser and he nailed it to the cross. Hmm. There were things that were standing against us. Those things that are standing against you even now. Those things, those big, big mountains, those high mountains where you think, When we were condemned, when the devil thought he could, he, we are under his condemnation, Jesus took it away. He nailed it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and principalities that are up against us even today, <laughs> he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now listen to this. Hope is victory. Hope is freedom. Hope is peace. Hope is triumph. Hope is that breakthrough that you have been waiting for. And hope is deliverance. Hope is Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He will forever be our hope. I pray that today, I pray that whoever is watching, we know, will know that we just Christ Right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the COVID protocol are creeping in. Protocols that are creeping in on us, and I'll ask Sipo Similana just to give a few announcements. But hereafter, as we're being ushered out, we'll have Prince Lingwasa paying the trumpet tribute, and then after which he can prolong as much as he can as we, as we walk out. Gonke Segumi Mumu Mungapan, the traffic cop, everybody else in, 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 in place. So, 
let us listen to Prince as he ushers us out, but then, yes. I just have one uh, quick request, uh, which has been asked by the Metro Corps who have assisted to help us. If you can just borrow me two seconds of your time. Uh, they've asked Guti, all the people who are eligible or allowed to go to the cemetery, Guti, uh, you will follow and form a, a line behind the family cars so that by the time we come out here, all of us, we follow one proceeding and we're going to be driving in just one line follow, following you know, the Metro Corps. Thank you. Siti hamba kase mziligazi kwenye kama shubana hamba kase nsi zoeagiti kula kwa nguelu usuglu ile ulua ogushe ususkumbuzi ile amazi imbonya kwa zulu yone ya ti zofinsi zwa kusali zbongo. Sishoguwe no makilo kilo inyo ni mluzi. Umziligazi, umziligazi. Umziligazi kunge eno kwa mashobana. Umziligazi kungo wakwe itu kwa nguilu. Umziligazi onga shumelalika ngulo sana. Obe ngumizi ndaba e pulpiti. Kandaba gubo bazi nguma e kunjini. Inyo ni eshingishane. Kobe shingleli la gubo kwa zulu. Wa shingleli uka eza no shati kulu. 
Wasingela um get the gaham. Well, I get to lava and guinea Wakopa, a piggily buffenda. As I'm on condogams legacy. Ebeza ragitu wa mashobana. Ye no washingle lu together. Cobo mela manses and busy. Nani ma fenda senior fantele. Cogubuga is sumela la mantuma. E cook along blazul shaza. Ela naila is tolling in sogama funja. La melum pilum ulu la chogosa. La chogosa im lozi mamiloti is good fini. La chogosa im lozi ema melum abeni. Sish is a hosies and anelwa is so eto. Quatu atasa o metresi silto so. Uma kio kienge pensela. Kanchengam silga sobe kiang en tenta. Uma kio kien kunshin wa yunisa. Wakiaka to bam kaka is siku. Uma kiao kien kunshin en kule vetsi. Wakiaka to bam kaka mnyezane. Eminwam boy pampene kushe kwea balusi. Pula mangu tuba hana. Puma kubalu. Lalani ngoko olu. Puma kiyo kienga manuti. Kanyinawe ma. Lalani ngoko olu profesa mziliga azikumalu. Kanyinawe mamrose kumalu. Ni ibekile indugu ebanda. Ndungwa, mbulazi, mziliga azika mashobana.
Thank you. 